All right, our next company is called Park Avenue, and uh, their development partner was Valix Consulting. Thank you. Hello, my name is Taylor Mills, and I'm the founder of Park Avenue, which is an on-demand parking app that creates more parking options by connecting unused private parking spots with people who really need them. So people spend about 30% of their time in traffic just looking for parking spots. Perhaps you've been in this situation. Say you go down to Jersey Shore for a beach day. You spend so much time looking for parking because all the lots are full. You end up parking so far away at some meter that you have to continue to refill. Or potentially you have the opposite problem where you live over there, you only use your spot maybe during nights and weekends because you're working here in the city most of the time. And you like to make money, but you don't really know how because you don't have a way to facilitate that transaction. Park Avenue facilitates that transaction for you by creating more spots for these spot seekers. As a seeker, you simply use your GPS, find the spot nearest you, and park there. And then as an owner, you simply upload your spot, you list your price and availability, and it will help you figure out your pricing. And then you get your money deposited directly into your account. At Park Avenue, all we ask for is 20% of each of those transactions. So currently, in very visitor-dense areas, the main parking options, like I said, are meters, lots, or garages. There are a few apps that kind of help you determine the price or availability at each of these places, but they aren't always updated in real time, and you can't necessarily book straight through the app. So for example, Parking Panda might tell you that in Jersey City they have a lot that's $10 a day. By the time you get there, the lot's full, and you don't even have a parking spot, and all the other ones are more expensive. So with, par with sharing actual parking spots, you have a guaranteed um, real-time parking spot. You know how to get there through GPS. You don't waste time circling the block looking for it. And then you also have a one-touch, kind of like Venmo or kind of like Airbnb or Uber. You just press one button and the money goes straight through. You don't have to search for coins or your card or cash. Now, in the share space community, there are a few websites that do this, but a website, again, is not very convenient when you're on the go trying to find a spot right in that moment. And the few spot apps that actually do exist are only in downtown urban areas, such as Chicago or Boston. Um, also, there's a lack of customer service from the, from the perspective of the spot owner, and those are the people who are actually making the money. So how is Park Avenue different? We're an on-demand app that's very convenient for both the spot owner and the spot user because you're using the same platform. We're also focused on a completely different market. We're not going to these downtown urban areas. We're focusing on sub-markets that have a lot of privately owned parking spots. And also, we're focusing on a different demographic, which is visitors to these areas, not the local people. And of course, we also want to have superior customer service by having, making sure that everyone on our team really knows the product and can answer any owner's questions, and also that we have a quick response to any inquiries. So we plan to start in Venice Beach because this has both a high supply of, park, of privately owned parking spots as well as a high demand of visitors or spot seekers. And in order to reach these visitors, we plan to have mobile campaigns through social media and other online platforms. Whereas for the local spot owners, we plan to reach them through on the ground marketing, community involvement, and local campaigns. As we expand, we want to continue to expand to places, again, that have both supply and demand. And we really want to focus on building our brand awareness and building, increasing our market share within each market before just expanding to a bunch of new markets. Because this is a fairly new idea, and we want to make sure that the communities really understand it and understand our brand. And in terms of expansion, this idea of the share economy or peer-to-peer -peer market it's really expanding a lot. According to PricewaterhouseCoopers, it's going to expand from $15 billion to $335 billion in the next decade. And we want to be a part of that expansion. So if we can take just 1% of the market in Venice Beach, based on the average pricing of parking there, and we can expand that 1% to an even greater percent throughout the, the next five years while continuing to expand in a few markets in expanding our own 1% to other markets, we will reach about $1.7 million in the first five years. And that's a very conservative number when you take into account that it's only 20% of each transaction that we're receiving. In terms of this fund, similar to the last company, this, this money will bring us to beta. We plan to create um, the actual app, continue creating that, we already have the prototype, and then spend the rest of the money actually going into the market, surveying the different perspectives of both the spot owners and the spot seekers, and then building campaigns to reach both of those targets. Again, my name is Taylor. I'm a warden grad. My professional background is in sales and marketing, both at Fortune 500 companies and tech companies. And I'm also a big member of the shared economy, working with Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, all those type of companies. We're also working with Harvey. I don't know if he, where he is right now, but 
A lot of you might know him from Ben Franklin. He's a mentor and advisor to a lot of early stage companies. And then, of course, we're working with Valix Consulting to help make our prototype and with Karina to help build our company team. As she mentioned, we're looking for a CEO, somebody with customer-facing experience. We're also looking for someone that has tech experience who can kind of help bring our app to beta. So if you have any comments or concerns or you think you know anyone that fits those descriptions, feel free to reach out to me at this address. Thank you. Yuri? What if I've got this nondescript white panel van, I rent a parking spot in your driveway and set up my meth lab there? How do I get rid of You want a percentage of that, right? No. <laughs> That's a fair question. I'm sure Airbnb deals a lot with something like that. So we're simply facilitating the transaction, and in our terms and conditions, you're agreeing that somebody else is putting their car in your spot. So that's their car. They own that property. Anything that happens in that car is not related to you, nor is it related to us. Similarly, as you probably know with Airbnb or Uber, if I decide to kill myself in an Uber car, that driver is not responsible for it. Well, but the, 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 the second part of the question is how do I get rid of that? Oh, how do you get rid of it? <laughs> so that's where our customer service comes in <laughs> and our terms and conditions. There will be something written in that. And so we even had different lawyers come um, talk to us about different terms and conditions that could work with this. So we'd work with um, lawyers to determine exactly what we can do in terms of putting something in our terms and conditions about towing it and who would pay for those expenses and things like that. Yes. Can you, can you talk a little more about how you plan to acquire users? about how we plan to acquire users. Yeah. So in the share economy, let's see. So in the share economy, which is um, this peer-to-peer -peer marketing market that we discussed, the majority of them are millennials that are ages 18 to 24, and they usually learn things through word of mouth. So for example, most people use Uber because their best friend used Uber, and their best friend used it because their mom used it. So in order to reach that type of demographic, we plan to reach a lot through, so, through mobile communities, so social media, online communities, and those type of things, and for example, since we're really focusing on visitors, and we describe visitors as anyone who doesn't live in that community, so for example, I'm from LA, but I don't live in Venice, so I'd be considered a visitor, um, equally to somebody who's from another country. We might partner with companies like Yelp, or Time Out, or TripAdvisor, to really capture the people who are visiting that and looking for things to do in that city, because when they look for it, then they'll see, oh, there's this restaurant, I can also park really close through this app. Have you looked at the impact on uh, homeowners insurance for people using their property for commercial use? So in, in order to sign up for this, it's kind of our job as Park Avenue to make sure that there's no legal zoning laws. But in terms of actually uploading your spot, it's on the spot owner to verify that they have the insurance and the ability to do that. Again, it's very similar to Airbnb's model where you have, as in their terms and conditions, if I want to rent out my house to an Airbnb user, I have the responsibility to say that I have that insurance or I have that owner's responsible or the right to be able to do that. It's not really on Airbnb or in this case on Park Avenue. Uh, in, in terms of payment, do you expect where do you expect users to have an account where they will have I don't know hundred dollars credit in there that they can use whenever they uh, come across these parking spaces? Or are you paying um, per transaction? I mean, how do you how do you imagine the actually mon monetary transactions that take place? So you. Good question. So you pay directly through your, you set up your bank account through it and it goes directly with each transaction. And this model is very similar to something like Venmo or Lyft or Uber where it just directly deposits or deposits and withdraws from your account every time you make a transaction. Uh, first of all, is this a question? It's super quick. First of all, I want to say you're a great presenter. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you have to get approval from the cities. That's one of the things that we're looking into in terms of seeing which legal zoning laws there are. And what we're firstly looking at Uber and Airbnb, like I mentioned, to see what their laws are. But we know that there are certain downtown cities, for example, Portland, where it is legal to do something like this. And so it depends a lot on which county and city you're in. So that's one of our parts of due diligence as we expand to different markets. Cool. Thank you.